Okay, if you need an SVG application, I can recommend iVinci Express. It's free from the App Store and it will pretty much do just about everything you need for 3D in motion from going to SVG to a font into motion. And as a quick overview, there's really not that much to it. It's pretty lightweight. It does do layers. You can add layers, delete layers, duplicate layers, and merge layers here. Here's your object coloring. You can turn on a grid and you can turn on snapping. That will help you out a lot. I'm going to have to let you learn how to use it. I'm just doing a quick overview here. Two of the main features you're probably going to want is uh, one, I'll do a new layer here. You can draw a shape. Holding down the shift key will constrain it. Let's uh, move this and snap it to a uh, center point. And let's do something like this. And select this and move this. Then you can select both shapes. Go to modify and make compound path. And you can cut a hole in your shape. When you export these shapes to make a font, you're going to want to make sure that all the colors are black. The other thing that you can do on this is convert text to a path. That's usually a pretty big deal, especially if you want to make a custom font look without actually having to build an entire new font. And We'll increase the size here. And just go to modify, convert text to path. And then you can get in with the path tool and edit these. Okay, that's just a quick overview. I don't think you'll have to spend a whole lot of time learning how to use this application. It's Like I said, it's pretty bare bones. Feature set is limited. But with the grid and snapping and converting text and making compound paths, you know, to cut holes into shapes, this is nearly everything. I can think of one other instance. That's to wrap this text on a path. If you have Illustrator or designer or any of the others you probably can already do that but if you don't and you're just getting started this application has everything you need i'm going to head on over and spend some time with the font making tool that i recommend once you have your svg files okay use your browser and navigate over to icomoon.io slash app and that's the first time there this is probably what you'll see your project manager is over here on the right side in the top. So go ahead and click on that and start your new project, give it a name. Okay. And load it. Then import your icons. Now in the finder, these are some shapes I drew in iVinci. And I'm going to hold down the command key and make a multiple selection. I'm just going to do three characters right now, trying to keep this as short as possible. And here they are imported. Now, once you import them, you need to select them. And you'll go to Generate Font. And before you actually download, there's a few things you need to know. First of all, your characters, when you generate the font, are going to be very high up in the Unicode font space. These start at E900, that's a designated private use area. And that's not going to cause you any problems working in motion or dealing with the font. It's just you won't have keyboard access to the characters, but you can copy and paste over from font book. So before you go any further, you need to either click on the preferences, the gear icon up here, or this gear icon down here. And let's give your font a name. And you can ignore the classes. You can uncheck support for IE8 or leave it on, doesn't matter. You can ignore CSS selector, but you need font metrics. 
for the M square. 1024 is fine for regular 2D type, but for 3D resolution, you're going to want to put this all the way up to the maximum, which is 8192. It's going to be the same on Glifter. If you put anything higher, they're going to reset it to 8192. So you can put 10,000, it'll be 8192. When you design your fonts in uh, your SVG app, uh, it's best to have a center line and a vertical axis point to be the center of your model. And that relationship with each of the characters will become apparent when I show you how you import these in motion. It's just a good idea when you design your pieces to design them in relationship to a center point of the model. And usually I have my baseline set at right through the middle and we'll put this at 50%. White space doesn't matter. Metadata, go ahead and put in your copyright information And the license, the version was already taken care of for you, so you can just go ahead and close this. This application remembers stuff in cookies, so you don't have to save that. You just set it and close it. Then go ahead and download. save it. Once it's saved, you can go back into the finder and unzip your package and open the folder and inside you will find uh, the fonts folder. Uh, you have an SVG version, a web version, and the TTF is what you need. So let's open font book. Fontbook allows you to create collections, and you can create collections for model types. Just click this little plus button down here, create a model type, and go ahead, and we'll go ahead and put this in. Okay, so now we have our font in Fontbook. Now we can open Motion. If Motion is open, already you have to quit motion and then restart it because motion updates all its font stuff when it opens and it will not update the new font automatically so we'll open a project uh, command tab over to font book and doesn't matter which character I'm going to start with the blade copy it, come into motion, click the text object, click on the canvas, and paste. Motion is smart enough to know which font you copied the character from, and there's no need for this at this minute. I just want this a little larger so you can see it. I'm going to duplicate this character, go back into font book, copy the next character, come into the text inspector and replace the original character with the new one. Paste and see this is the importance of designing your model in the SVG application where the pieces fit together like you want them to appear. Duplicate this character. Head on over to Fontbook. Copy. Okay, so here we have our preliminary model. I'm going to change this over to 3D so I can maneuver around in space. And we'll select all of these characters. Then go over to Appearance. Click 3D. And start building our model. Starting with the blade, now since we're 
dealing with Unicode characters, you'll see that you got these little question marks here. It's going to be really helpful if you label these. Okay. Starting with the blade. Blades are easy. Just convert them to metal. Slide the depth down to zero. Switch the front edge to bevel. The depth leave at about four. Let's turn this into light a little bit. And let's crank up the width. There we go. Now, if you really want this to shine, go to Finish, Custom Specular, and then go to Environment. Let's crank up the contrast just a bit. Very nice. Okay. We'll go to the guard. The guard is also metal. The guard has depth. And then going to the handle or the grip, we can dial down the depth on that one and keep this round and increase the depth here because we want it to be more circular in shape and then crank up the width to this. We can adjust the position a little bit and I'm leaving the details of textures and stuff to another tutorial on. But that's the basics of going from an SVG application, creating the font, and getting into motion and building your model. I hope you found this useful. I'll catch you on the next one.